Uh, welcome to the sales stage for Hot Takes Live. Uh, super excited to have you guys joining us today. We've got a full schedule. We've got one of the stages that goes all the way to the end with speakers. Uh, and to get us kicked off, I'm super excited to enter in uh, one of my former colleagues, actually, uh, Tarmo Vandergoot, who uh, used to work with me in a previous role uh, and is now currently vice president of uh, MIA at Chargebee. So let's welcome in Tarmo. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Thanks looks for having like me, you guys. Joe. Yeah, for sure. Um, looks like you are going to be talking about discovery. So uh, if I could just let you get uh, started and I'll get out of your way. Uh, excited to hear what you've got to say. Perfect. And since uh, we're doing this uh, live, just as a confirmation, everyone can see the, the presentation. There we go. All right. So we got 10 minutes and five minutes for questions. So I'll dive right in. Topic for today that we're going to discuss discovery is not dead. You're just doing it wrong. Very quickly, uh, who I am. So Vice President EMEA for, uh, for Chargeby. Uh, I've been running the data operations here for uh, for the last three years for Europe. Uh, interesting fact about myself, I've been trying a lot, but I'm still not that good at golf. Uh, I'm taking on any challengers, and uh, you have a very good shot of actually beating me. So the origin. To start off, discovery fatigue, it is a real thing, um, but it's not what you think. Hopefully some of the following things uh, can sound quite familiar. If you ever heard the things about we're all about product-led growth or customers that want to sit through your demo uh, or I'm just here for the price or you need to combine demo with discovery. Um, I mean, yeah, I've heard it all before and I'm not saying it's wrong. Product-led growth is important. Um, but if it's all about price, then you're just not doing it wrong because people don't necessarily just want to sit through your demo. They just want to see the product. I mean, I also feel the same way every now and then. I mean, I also evaluate tools and I also get bombarded with question after question after question. And sometimes I'm just sitting there like, just hurry up and show me what I want to see already. Uh, or sometimes, and that's even worse, uh, I immediately get that demo. And then halfway through the presentation, I just literally get bored to death and I start falling asleep. And all I can think about is just stop wasting my time. Right, so stop, uh, stop doing those demos. But here's the thing. Um, when I'm a buyer and I don't, and I approach your company, you don't know yet my problem, right? You don't have any clue what the reason was for me to actually go to your page and schedule uh, a meeting with your sales team to learn more. Uh, and one of the things that I always like to explain this is like the following. Let's take, for example, when you want to visit the zoo. If I want to go and visit the zoo and I want to see my favorite animal, uh, just so you know, my favorite animal are, uh, is the emperor penguin. And I walk into the zoo and a, a zookeeper comes up to me and he starts showing me and talking to me about all the amazing animals that they have in the zoo. Literally. I don't care how awesome your zoo is. I don't really care how many animals you have. Um, I don't care how many animals you've already released in the wild. I mean, actually, it's kind of a lie. I mean, I do highly appreciate those kind of programs. But I mean, if you start showing me the giraffes and the antelopes and the lions and every zoo nowadays has a red panda, um, I don't really care. I mean, not at first. I mean. If I want to, if I'm visiting the zoo and I want to see my favorite animal, show me my favorite animal already, right? In my case, just show me those penguins. After I've seen those penguins and I'm happy, I mean, then we can talk, right? Then you can show me the rest. Um, and that's kind of the, the crux of it all. If, if your buyers are scheduling demos um, and you're basically immediately start with showing your product, but you don't know what the actual problem is, then literally, you are the problem, right? Because you're not giving me what I'm here to see. So discovery fatigue, it is a real thing, but buyers do still love a good discovery. What they don't like is a bad discovery. Like they hate a shitty discovery. So what we need to do as sellers 
we need to learn and know what the problem is so you can actually quantify the size of the problem. So how does this actually look? Uh, in practice we all know uh, and sometimes it's the elephant in the room but we are selling in a down market right now so what does that actually mean in today's world the cfo's office is uh, is kind of running companies if your software or product uh, is not mission critical you're kind of in trouble right because everything is currently being evaluated when times are down uh, you have to increase the perceived value of your offering and you do this not by just focusing on what people get, but you actually need to highlight the cost of not doing anything. And I'm sorry to say this, you're not going to be able to do this by just immediately going into a demo and start showing everything that I actually did not come to see in the first place, because again, you don't know my problem yet. So what your sellers or yourself need to do, you need to be empathetic. Maybe your company has also gone through this or something similar uh, similar like this, but companies right now, I mean, they're cutting costs, right? So this means uh, that layoffs uh, are happening all over. Um, unnecessary products are being, are being discontinued uh, and they're not the top priority right now. So that also means that they're not going to buy or your buyers or when someone does an evaluation, they're not going to buy anything uh, if it has not proven its worth. So what you need to do or what your sales team need to do uh, is focus on how you can actually help your customers and your customers in this particular instance is also going to be that CFO who's kind of running the company right now uh, on how they can actually um, save those costs and be more uh, effective uh, with their budget. So you also need to be empathetic to what they're going through. Because if you're not empathetic, you're not able to show that, that true value that your product brings. Again, you're not going to be able to move forward. So forget about the nice, uh, the nice to have that your product uh, might have. Uh, because again, I'm very sorry to say in today's world, no one really cares about the features that you offer. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily that they don't care, but you need to prove your worth in today's market more as a recession survival kit. And again, the only way to be able to get to that actual problem and to be able to show how your pro how your product is going to be a value add to that CFO uh, office, it is to do that proper discovery. So what we all need to do uh, is stop wasting people's time. So stop doing demos that are more like, let's say the tour of the zoo, where you're only showing the animals when all I actually wanna see is the penguins. We need to focus and go back on focusing on the problem. We need to connect the dots between an actual quantifiable business problem and your own product. Because if you only focus on your own product, uh, believe me, your prospects are just gonna get bored uh, and you're not going to be able to move forward. So again, what we need to do, start listening, but then also again, really listen. We need to start solving, uh, because if you're only solving a technical issue today in today's market, again, for a CFO, that's not necessarily worth the limited budget that they're working with in today's world. So how do we need to do this? And how can you do this? By a proper thought out discovery process that is centered around the business problem of your prospect or customer. So in conclusion, what I'd like to say, yes, discovery fatigue, it is a real thing, but discovery is not that. You need to be able to learn to do a better discovery because buyers love a good discovery, they hate a shitty discovery. Awesome, thank you, Tarmo. So I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking through uh, a lot of what you guys, uh, a lot of what you were talking about, and it's really interesting to think about uh, new reps coming in, right? I think people who have come from other organizations often want to take the shortcut and somebody requests that demo and they just want to jump right in because they want to please they want to pe you know mm -hmm. be that people pleaser how do you help like especially your new reps your new folks that are joining the sales organization really get out of those old bad habits yeah i mean obviously it's all so all about enablement and don't throw your reps like too soon uh, through the fire and expect them to do everything perfectly from day one 
So you need to be able, obviously, to be able to teach them how the product works so they are able and understand what the features are. I'm not saying sell the features, but you need to have a good understanding of what your product has to offer. Because when your reps are basically comfortable and confident about their selling, that's when they're also going to be able and comfortable around asking the right questions to be able to quantify someone's business problem. So what does that mean? Uh, hypothetically, let's someone comes to your discovery or your demo and they say, well, I have a problem with my, uh, with my invoicing. That's a technical problem. Right, so what a lot of reps do then is, well, I mean, if you have a problem with your invoicing, then let me show you how awesome that we can solve this. I mean, yeah, a lot of people can probably do the same thing. You need to be empathetic and listen and actually understand and ask some more questions around, okay, so if you have some technical problems with your invoicing, what does that actually mean? Like, why are you having those problems? And when those invoices are not working the way it should, what does that mean for your balances? I mean, are you maybe not able to generate enough invoices on time? How much money are you losing? Were you actually trying uh, or purchase another thing to help you grow to the next stage, but because your invoicing aren't working the way it should, you don't have basically the cash flow now actually to do what you need and what you want to do. So then you're coming from a technical problem all the way to a business problem. And again, the only way that you get to that stage is by asking the right questions. And you can only ask the right questions with the right amount of product knowledge. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The other thing that that I was thinking through, something that we talk about a lot here at Breadcrumbs is this idea of discovery through demo, right? Where, yeah, you're gonna go and set up your first call, you're gonna you know, make sure you do that thorough discovery and you're gonna touch maybe on one highlight of the product. But as you get into like call two, call three, and you're continuing to, uh, to showcase products and features that are, are relevant to them or can solve their problems, we're still trying to pull out more information through that, that demo as a continued discovery, right? You're always learning as you're talking to your clients. Every, t every, uh, every conversation you have is another opportunity to learn another key piece of information. Yeah. Are you guys using some of those same strategies uh, or think of those as the, the same way as you go through or is it something different for you no. guys? No, we're going down a different route. Uh, but again, it also depends a lot on your product, right? So if you're, let's say, if you have mission critical software that touches a lot of different areas within the organization, obviously that's like a different sale than if you're basically solving one singular problem and that's all you do, right? So then you can actually dive into the, uh, into the, uh, into the matter uh, much faster and much quicker. Uh, but again, the challenge that you have by doing the demo and the discovery at the same time, you're basically, your starting point is kind of, I don't know what I need to show. And if mm -hmm. you have someone who's highly engaged, done a ton of desk research, knows exactly what you need to do, and it's like, Joey or Joe, I need a demo from you. I'm actually already solved or sold. <laughs> I just need you to show me a couple of things. I mean, perfect. We, yeah. we have those requests as well. But what happens more often is well, I'm kind of on the fence here. Right. And again, my CFO has a very limited budget. So uh, you actually need to do some work to in order to not only convince me, but my entire C-suite uh, that the limited budget that we have, we should spend on your uh, solution. Yeah, I think very rarely do we reach that panacea of, I'm already sold, just show me what I need to see and we're done. <laughs> but that's the idea we're always looking for, right? Um, so great, uh, thanks so much for your time, Tarmo. Uh, doesn't look like we have any questions from the, from the group. Uh, so if you guys wanna go back and, uh, re-listen. You guys have access to these uh, afterwards and can uh, pause on any of the slides. Uh, thanks again, Tarmo. It was wonderful talking to you and we'll hope to connect soon. Oh, certainly. Thanks all. Thanks, Joe. Bye. And for everyone else, we will be joining back here in uh, just a little bit at the top of the hour. Uh, we'll go on a little short break for about five minutes and uh, kick off our next session with Andrea. Thanks.